Hello, this is Rod Ovid with another Take 5. We bring these to you every Monday through Saturday on our Facebook page here for Rod Ovid and for Logos Institute of Biblical Studies. These are five-minute messages that we try to get our arms around a portion of Scripture, give you some background information, perhaps some uh, Greek or Hebrew words, something that will help enlighten the passage and allow us to chew it and enjoy it together and deposit it into our mind, our heart, our soul, and then into our shoe leather. Look forward so much to coming to you during these moments. I've had a lot of interesting conversations lately from people all around the world, and there's a lot of suffering going on. There's a lot of anguish going on, and Christians aren't exempt. We do worship God. We do praise God. We do have faith in God, and he blesses us for sure. But there are still those times in our lives when, for whatever reason, we are downcast. We are under the weather. We are in a cave Sometimes it's brought about by our own actions, our own attitudes, our lack of faith or our lack of discipline, our lack of trust and even following the Lord. But God is long-suffering. God is patient and kind. And I wanted to share with you part of a psalm today, Psalm 107. This is in one of the Psalters, uh, many of which were written by David. This one's not. This was written much later, uh, most likely during the return of the Babylonian exiles. In fact, he's talking to a lot of people that have been through the travail of exile. And he begins by saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We've heard that before, haven't we? That's a good way to begin any day. It's a good way to start looking at the things about us. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Remember, love is God's motivating attribute. It guides everything he does. Sure, yes, indeed, he's holy. He's omniscient. He's powerful. But love is that motivating attribute. And we as the redeemed need to say so. And he continues and says, Those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Most likely talking about the dispersion, those of Assyria and Babylon. And what's interesting, he says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And he keeps talking about being redeemed through this passage. And the word there is very interesting in the Hebrew. It's ga'al. And it means to rescue, to redeem, to deliver. And this is a very important word. To be redeemed, to be bought back from slavery or from ownership or from being imprisoned. We can be redeemed from the sickbed. We can be redeemed from our own inner tortures. God is in the redeeming business. See, things were perfect in the garden, but we're not in the garden. We're in a fallen world, and he is redeeming us back and setting us up for an eternity with him. And so we are the galal. We are rescued. We have been delivered. We are the redeemed. And he talks about various situations, wandering in the desert, sitting in darkness in the deepest gloom, And in all the cases, there's a sentence that says, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And that word cried out, sa'ak. And sa'ak means to shriek, to summon, to plead for relief. And we've all been there. God, please help. And he does. And I don't know about your situation today. I know there are those times in my life where I just shriek out to God and he hears me. And he hears you as well. And maybe it's been a while, but maybe you need to right now say, Father, you know, I haven't been doing what I should be doing. I've been sitting in darkness. I've been wandering in the desert. And I want to cry out to you because you are the Redeemer. And you need to buy me back. You need to hold me close. And I need to be rescued, Galau, by you. And I cry out, Sahak, to you. You do that today. He'll hear you. He'll rescue you. And you work on that relationship with him. Keep it open and honest and consistent. And by doing so, you will have a blessed day.